Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to everyone present over here. I am Namrata Hari from SRMIC Rampuram. Hack the Mountains 2.0 welcomes you all for the session. It's really nice that all of you have taken off your time to attend this session and learn something new. Let's continue having the spirit for this event and for the upcoming events as well. We are delighted to announce that we have Lumos Labs as our sponsor for our hackathon this year. They have bought a session on the topic Smart Contract Development on N3 with Stephen. Stephen is the team leader at NGD. His experience in the field makes him more than qualified to guide you through this workshop. If you hackers want to know how to use Neo N3 in your hackathon project, this workshop is perfect to ask any questions related to Lumos Lab and the best project gets the chance to win prizes worth 22K and other exciting prizes from the blockchain for beginners with Neo Track. You can check out further details at our Hack the Mountains website. Uh, if you have any questions, ask away. Without further ado, Hack the Mountains team welcomes you, Mr. Stephen. Over to you. The stage is all yours to rock. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Stephen, and I'm the tech leader of NGD Shanghai. And uh, today, I'm very happy to give us a workshop uh, talking about the development on N3. And uh, now I will share my screen and uh, turn off my camera. OK, I think uh, you guys can see my screen, right? OK, now it's my it's my uh today's workshop uh today i'm going to give you an introduction about the development on neo blockchain i think uh, today's workshop will uh, come up with some like the story of neo the theory knowledge of neo the upcoming neo3 and the example of smart contract development on neo3 okay first of all uh, let me introduce about myself. My name is Steven and I'm Chinese. I'm technologist of New Foundation and I'm tech leader of our DeFi protocol Flamingo and I'm head of de development in NGD Shanghai. I work for New since 2018 and personally I'm a software engineer and a DApp developer. Okay, first of all, I may introduce a little bit about the story of New the very famous public blockchain in the world. Uh, I think before that, uh, I, I, I may explain a little bit of about my understanding of the current blockchain world. I think uh, everyone knows Bitcoin here, right? Uh, from 2008, the Satoshi created the, the, he published the white paper of Bitcoin. And uh, from my point of view, Bitcoin is not something new. It's just a example of some technical things from the traditional co computer science world, like a system match, metric encryption, the hash encryption, the proof of work, these kind of things. And he combines all of these things to a uh, peer-to-peer distributed ledger to build a distributed trusted currency system and the payment solution. I think Bitcoin is uh, the most important thing in the crypto world. And uh, until now, I think uh, a lot of countries, large companies, they're looking forward to use Bitcoin to uh, as their in their currency system as a payment solution. But uh, as the, in the, because of the limitation of the function, Bitcoin can only use in the payments, in the trading, but uh, it cannot be used very widely in the uh, business field. Now come up with blockchain 2.0. Here I type, uh, make this title. Uh, in the 2.0 blockchain, we have Ethereum, EOS, and uh, NEO, of course. What What's the new things here in this stage? It's the... Uh, Every blockchain has a Turing complex machine and a extended script language that let people can do some development on this uh, blockchain world. And uh, 
before that, you can do trading and do payment with Bitcoin. But based on this, these kind of blockchain 2.0, you can build a lot of things, create smart contract and D apps. Uh, in this er in this stage, blockchain is more like a, a operating system, and it provides a lot of API and interface, and people can do a lot of apps and uh, implement business logic based on this. Now people are more talking about the blockchain 3.0 what's the 3.0 i think some people say it's like quantum computing some people say it's like a lightning network a shading these kind of things from my point of view the 3.0 is still not very clear and uh, it's it, we, we still have to like put take a lot of time and resource to investigate investigate on yet but with the blockchain 3.0, I believe the blockchain applications can be used in a lot of areas like the finance, government, scientific, and artist, maybe. So in three blockchain 3.0, the blockchain can have the ability to handle the enterprise level business applications. That's my understanding of the current blockchain world. Now let's talk about the new blockchain. I think Neo is very famous. Maybe you guys heard a lot about it, it, it before. Uh, Neo, we begin it from 2015 by our founders, and it's open sourced in the beginning and it's globally developed. We have a core developer team around the world. And uh, the target of Neo is to use the smart contract digital asset to digitalize the real world asset on, on the blockchain and use the digital identity to make it on chain and do the economic, uh, digital economics. That's the goal of the NEO in the beginning. That's called the smart economy. And as I, uh, this is a storyline. In the beginning, we called on share and then we open sourced on the GitHub and uh, 2016 we launched the mainnet and from 2017 we rebranding to the neo and we have the, our token standard released 2018 we hold our defcon and 2019 we hold off our second defcon we have our new branded design and the last year we do a lot of things like we have our own uh, DeFi protocol flamingo and we also join a cross-chain protocol with another blockchain called Poly Network. And this year, we are going to launch the N3. I will talk more about it later. So I, as I said in the, uh, before NEO has uh, famous for a lot of years and it grows every year, we had a lot of things in the ecosystem, a number of wallets, uh, a number of infrastructures, and also a number of D apps and DeFi protocols. And the NEO is uh, going to build a great developing ecosystem. And uh, you can see a lot of exchanges list NEO and NP5, and uh, almost every wallet support it. And we have huge daily transactions and D apps daily users. And we have our global communities. Yeah, and uh, here is some uh, view of our global community. You can see a lot of community around the world, and we have our strong social medias. As I said, NEO is globally developed. We are not only based in Shanghai, we are also have office in Seattle, and that's the NGD team. Uh, in addition to that, we also have our community team, like we have the NEO research based in Brazil, Redforce based in Spain, X Labs based in Zurich, uh, NSTCC based on St. Petersburg, City of Zion, they are based in Europe and America, and uh, New Tracker based in Seattle. Yeah, all of these communities contribute a lot to the NEO, and we are looking forward to new teams and new starters to join the community. And hopefully, we can have some new one, new face in India. Now I think uh, the, the story of Neo is almost finished and uh, now I'm, 
I will talk a little about the theory of NEO. First of all, NEO has a different consensus algorithm. Uh, you guys may heard about uh, POW proof work in the uh, Bitcoin, and uh, the B Bitcoin is using the proof work, which is uh, sounds like if you want to produce a block, you have to do a lot of work, do a lot of computation, which means you have some cost if you pro want to produce a block. And the probability is that the transaction will not be reverted because if you want to revert a block in the Bitcoin, you have to cost a lot, a lot of resource. And the POS is called economic finality because uh, that means you have to hold a lot of economic expenses for block to be reverted. And uh, why Neil use DBFT, which is a BFT related algorithm because it's absolute finality. And it's also called a single block finality, which means the one the trans transaction is created and packed into the block, it's finalized and included immediately and have no ability to revert. That's the DBFT con algorithm. It's very good for some uh, financial applications. And the DBFT algorithm has a number of steps. First of all, you uh, people can send the transaction to the network and the consensus node will receive this transaction and put in the memory pool. Then the speakers of the consensus will pack this transaction and uh, starts by broadcast a prepare request message and it will broadcast to the world. And also the delegates will receive the proposal that broke and verify it and also broadcast the prepare re response after receive it. And all the other validators will broadcast commit after receiving enough prepare response message. Finally, when the uh, validator produce and uh, 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 when the validator receive enough commit message, it will produce and bro broadcast the new block. And uh, then it starts the next run consensus. And in addition to the DBFT consensus algorithm, we also have a number of new utilities and new features for the new platform uh, other than other blockchains. For instance, we have our uh, uh, two token models. NEO is the governance token. GAS is the utility token. We have our uh, digital asset standard called NEP5. And also we have our NFT standard uh, NEO is a multi-language smart contract supported. I will talk more about this later when I talk about the smart contract development. And uh, we have our own design NEO VM. And it's our NEO's unique universal lightweight VM. And we also have NEO ID. It's a decentralized trust network. So people may be interested in the NEO VM. New VM is a lightweight virtual machine for running the new smart contract. And it's highly decoupled with the app level code and you can run it independently. And it's, it can be simply create an instance of new VM and people can easily use it. And you can use even use it in another blockchain and block, blockchain scenarios. And I will talk more about new VM now, about its structure and its running process. So uh, this is a more clear uh, picture. So new VM is actually uh, three main parts of it. The first one is execution engine. The second one is a stack. The third one is the interoperation service layer. So the execution engine is the core of the new VM is very responsible for loading the scripts and executing the corresponding instructions. 
such as the flow control, stack operation, bit operation, these kind of things. It's like the the core, like the CPU of the machine. And uh, it, it also can interact with other uh, other two parts. And uh, here we have the stack. And the new VM is a stack-based virtual machine. And uh, it has three types of stacks, the invocation stacks, the evaluation stacks, and the result stacks. And the invocation stack is to store all the execution context of current VM. And the evaluation stack is for storing the data used by the instructions. And the result stack is used to store the result after all the scripts executed. And uh, in addition to the interop uh, execution engine and the, st uh, the stacks, we have the interoperation service. The interoperation service is a bridge between the VM and the external data. So by uh, if you use the interoperation system in the smart contract, the new VM can access like the broker information, the transactions, the headers, and other data. And also we have our um, private storage for each contract. You can also use interoperation service to interact with this private storage. So what is the uh, smart contract in the new VM? Here I put an example. It's a very simple function, like it's a test function. It's the function called test, and it's, the, uh, it's just a return one. And after compile it and put in it into the new VM, you can see this is a compiled thing. It's just a one digital string. And when it puts to the new VM, new VM, it will be translated to a number of OP code, like uh, init function and push one yet, and put it in, into the result stack and re return back. So after all, the smart contract it, itself, it's just a sample of OP codes. It's not something difficult or, or something hard to understand. It's just like your normal uh, normal com uh, uh, computer science related program. It's just a, a sample of OP codes and running in the new machine, uh, virtual machine. So what's the new virtual machine execution process? I think uh, I, I can turn back to the previous slides with this picture. So first of all, you can write the smart contract with different high level language, like the C sharp, Java, Go, JavaScript. We support all these kind of high level programming language and then compile it to the OP code with different uh, supported compilers. And after you compile the resource code to the smart contract, and with the unified bytecodes, it will be stored in here in the storage area. And the execution engine of the virtual machine will load the bytecode file and the construct this byte file together with the related parameters and create a, a execution context. And each time execution engine takes instruction from the current context, it will run the corresponding operations according to the instructions, and the data generated will stored in the evaluation stacks. And if the uh, smart contract use some uh, external data and other operations, it will use the inter-operation interface. And after all these scripts are executed, the results will be stored in the result stack. Yeah, that's the whole process of how the smart contract running in our new VM. I will, uh, in the final part of this workshop, I will give you some example of how the new, uh, uh, how the smart contract is work and compiled and running with the result. 
Okay, I think uh, that's the main part of the concept of new blockchain. And now we are going to uh, upgrade our new. Before we called it Neo 2, and now we are going to upgrade, and it's called Neo 3 or N3, and it has a lot of new features. And uh, I will introduce a bit. Okay, first of all, we update our vision. Now Neo is uh, like it's an open source community driven blockchain platform. And our vision is still the same as before, like we want to be an uh, open network for the smart econo economy. And our mi mission is to make any asset, digital or physical, access accessible by the human beings and programs with minimized trust and permissions. And uh, that means developers can digitalize and automate the measurement of assets through the smart contract. And with uh, our strong, powerful infrastructures in a decentralized storage, oracles, uh, NNS, and these kind of things, we can build out uh, the next generation internet. And these are some details features we have in the uh, native, uh, in, in our N3. The first of all, we build our native contract. So what's native contract? Before our NEO and gas, uh, all the other things like the Oracle things, we are uh, doing uh, uh, some kind of hard code or some things. Now all of these are native contract rather than building the new hard code. That's more efficient and has li less limitation. And also it's compatible with the, the new NP5 standard before. And also we abandon our UTX model to enable new and the guests in the smart contract. And so people, when people develop things with the, the smart contract, it can access to these native contract directly. That's very friendly to the new developers. Second is our DBFT upgraded 2.0 version. And it's, it is much better and healthier and we improved a lot of memory pool performance and uh, reduced a portion of burden on the network. And that means we reduced off our average block time with the DBFT 2.0. And in S3, we have new FS. So the file storage is a very important thing in the blockchain world. You may notice that in the traditional internet world, People are more concerned with the large scale data and not only about the storing of data, but also care about the privacy of the data, the, the security of the data, these kind of things. And uh, in the N3, we have our native supported file storage called NeoFS, which is developed by the Neo St. Petersburg team. And they are building a Neo FS, new based file storage, can let people interact with the file storage directly from the smart contract. And it has a lot of features like the fault torrent and user controlled privacy and geographical and network scalability, and also has a lot of third party service integrated. And it's very great for the Neo ecosystem because with the Neo FS, people can build more larger scale business applications as the current internet world with all these large and important data stored in the Neo FS. In addition to that, Neo also have new ID in the N3. Uh, this one is developed by the Neo and the Swisscom blockchain together because. When people use the blockchain, they have a lot of concerns with their identity because before most of the users just create a wallet and interact all the activities and a smart contract with the wallet. It's great, it's anonymous, but uh, uh, people have some, in some scenarios, in some DApps, they are still 
uh, very important to know the customers and know who he is, know it, his behavior. So in the new ID, we create a trust model identity solution and the people can hold it as their privacy, can protect their privacy, but still the identity and the, their, uh, their information can be still verified by the D DF users and also authorities. In this way, people can use the new ID to do some KYC based applications or some credit or reputation based applications. That's the new ID feature on the new three. And in N3, we also have the interoperation uh, ability. We, with other blockchain like Ontology and uh, Zedica, Switcho, we build a, a polling network, which means the asset and the transactions on new blockchain can be transferred, can be interoperated in other blockchain. And uh, the same way as uh, the other blockchain's assets like Ethereum, Bitcoin can also transfer through the Poly network to the NEO and uh, do the related transactions. And uh, it's, it's very great. We already use it in the last year for the Flamingo Finance. And a lot of assets come to the NEO blockchain world and uh, do a lot of uh, uh, financial activities here in the NEO. I think uh, in the next uh, two or three years, interoperability is a very important thing for the blockchain world because no, not only one blockchain can, can work and finish all, all of things. I think uh, the, all the blockchains in the world will are connected with each other and uh, interact with each other. Okay, I think uh, that's all for today's slides. And uh, for our next one, I will introduce a bit about the real things, how to develop and how to interact with a smart contract with some small examples and demos. So maybe you, you guys may want to know like what is smart contract? The idea, it, it's like, it's very old, it's almost, uh, established in 1994 and uh, uh, now with the blockchain, the smart contract idea can be implemented on the blockchain. And uh, you can think about it, it as a vending machine. You put something as import, you get some uh, thing confirmed and trusted output. That's how the smart contract works. And the smart contract is like autonomy, trust, robustness with highly decentralized. And also uh, because it's decentralized, you also have economy because you don't have to involve lawyers or other like witness intermediators. And uh, in Neo, we support a lot of high level programming languages like support C sharp, Python, Java, Golang, and JavaScript. All of these languages are supported in the new blockchain. And the smart contract is very simple. It's not some complicated things. Here I just put some two very easy example. Like the first one is a C sharp uh, example. It just show like how to return write a man function and return a true. And the second one is the Python uh, example. It's just a put a, a string value into a storage. It puts the hello as a key and the word as a value. And also it implements a hello method, of a hello function and returns the string back. That's a two very simple example. And I will try to run these two example later in the demo. So why smart contract? With a smart contract, people can run their user-defined behaviors and uh, activities like to do the token exchange, manage the identity, identity, manage the storage, 
or do some like online voting, these kind of things. And in Neo, besides the smart contract programming language, we support a lot of dev we, we, we developed a lot of tools like the Explorer and the smart contract developer IDEs, the wallets and SDKs. We also provide some private net solutions. All of these tools can let the developers join the new development very easy. So I think uh, that's all for the slides. Now I will try to give you some demos and I will uh, quit the, the share and uh, with some demo. So first of all, I will start the private node. Well, because in the blockchain, you 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 may have the uh, do it with mainnet, or you can test it in the on the uh, test net. But I think in the beginning, the most uh, convenient convenient way is to do that on the private net. So in the documentation I shared with you. It's very easy to start up a private net, and uh, because Neo is based on C sharp, I, I use the C sharp version, but you guys can use the Python version or Go version. It's both okay. I use the C sharp version, and you just uh, run the .NET and uh, Neo CI, and uh, it's my private net. It's running already like one day or two days prepared for this workshop. The blockchain height is almost uh, 99,000. And uh, then you can see the it's running and it's producing the blocks. And now let me create, uh, open the, uh, open the demo I have already created. It's a C sharp demo. And it, it has a number of templates you are included. And uh, here is some basic information you want to include in the manifest. And uh, here is the main function of the smart contract. I create two functions. The first one is called a deploy. And this function is uh, executed immediately after it's deployed and it will uh, put something in the storage. Here we can change it. We, uh, we say we store the workshop and the key is hello. And uh, also we I implement uh, my personal method is called my method and it will get the the value from the storage and after that we can compile it and uh, let me open the another uh, a terminal it's uh, it's it, it's uh, another uh, uh, new CRI and uh, we have to run it And in, in order to deploy the smart contract, first of all, you have to open the wallet. Here I have already created a wallet and that's open yet. Okay, it opened it successfully. And let me, uh, let, let's check how much it has. Okay, I have already some uh, new and gas in yet. And uh, every transaction in the new N3, it has, it, it costs gas, and if you want to deploy the contract, if you want to invoke the contract, you have to uh, use the gas because gas is the utility token in the uh, in the Neo ecosystem, and then you have to use the gas to uh, to uh, deploy the contract, invoke the contract, and let's. Uh, First, uh, after we finish this, uh, we have to we have to uh, compile it. We open it in the terminal here in the VS Code, and we just uh, use a 
the on that build to compile it. Okay, we can see here we have already compiled it directly and it will be generated. Okay, here we can see it creates two two files here in the in the uh says bin folder and the SD folder. We have two files, the NEF is a smart contract uh, compiled file, and here we have the manifest which is the, the general information of the smart contract, including the name, the groups, the supported standards, and the ABI files also included in it. What we have to do is we have to deploy this NEF to the private chain directly. So let me first uh, check uh, what's the the files parts of it because if you want to deploy the uh, source file the compiled files to the uh, CRI you have to know the the detailed parts of it here we just call deploy and paste the parts we created and what's the name of it it's called workshop one dot nef workshop one dot EF. okay and it says uh th this one is a contract hash of your smart contract if you want to invoke it you have to remember this and it says it will cost you 10 about about 10 gas to deploy this one and also it will cost this gas because it's a transaction you have to pay the net fee and we say yes and it will be signed and relayed to the transaction and the transaction will be running in the uh, my private net. Okay, I think uh, the next block is already produced and it's uh, it's here we can see there is one transaction which is a deployment transaction. Now I want to invoke it. So before, as I said in the source code, you can see the function here. We have a deploy function and it will be executed immediately after the contract is deployed. And in this function, we put the hello as a key and the workshop as the value. Now we want to call this method to get the hello uh, as the key stored value. So what we need to do is we have to invoke this smart contract and uh, invoke the function. So we just invoke and here we have the contract hash, copy it and paste it. And we have to call the my method. Okay, we can see here is uh, the outcome. As I said, it's the result stack in the virtual machine. We already get it. But the value here is very strange because it's base 64 encoded and we can use the converter here. We can create some community tools to convert. We convert here and we convert to the base 64 decoding. We can see here is the value is called workshop. Okay, that's uh, very simple, right? That's very our first uh, demo of the c -sharp based smart contract. We can also use one the Python one, if you want, if someone is familiar with Python. Okay, for Python, it's uh, much easier because you don't have to install a lot of uh, dependencies as the .NET. You can just uh, install the BOA3, which is uh, the toolkit and uh, compiler for the Python developers of new smart contract. And uh, now in the Python smart contract, we also create two functions. The first one is called init. The second one is called hello. And we also change a bit. We use a key as, okay, we use the mountain as the key. We want to get the value of it. We don't use the word as a value. We can create a, a hack song as value. 
And uh, okay, that's all for uh, the Python uh, smart contract. I, I just uh, save it and uh, what I have to do is to compile it. Uh, let me open the other terminal, which is already has Python environment activated. Let me find the Python. Okay, uh, it's py work. Okay, let me first uh, delete uh, all these things. Okay, I just delete some old files and we just leave this uh, Python file, which is, we can see, which is just the uh, source code I just uh, created. And we use the new three power to compile it. Okay, it's, it says uh, hello world.nef is Create here. Let's check here, and we can also use the new CRI to deploy it. I think it's almost the same as I displayed you guys before. It's the same process uh, because the C sharp smart contract and the Python smart contract they will be both compared to the same bad code running by the new VM. So the other kind of deployment and invoke case are the same. Because of time, I don't want to run it again. That's, uh, that's the Python example. And uh, let me back to the slides. And so generally, when a D app, uh, what's a D app composed of? A D app composed of a smart contract you have to write it and compile it, and you have to find the network to deploy it. You can do it with private net. You can also do it uh, with a uh, test net or main net. And uh, finally, you have to build some website to some front end to interact with it. Like the crypto kitties, you have to build some very cutie things and some payment page to let you either buy it or sell it or interact with it. That means we have to use some front end and some wallet, wallet extension to interact with it. Here I also build an example about how to use the wallet ex extension and the JavaScript to interact with the smart contract on the test net. I, I'm not a JavaScript developer, but I I have some examples already using the React uh, framework. And here we can see a new demo here. So what, what we have to do is just include a new D API from the uh, NPM package. And uh, we have to store, uh, let, me, let me minimize the screen. We have to store the new line wallet extension because this extension supports the DAPI and uh, you can choose the testnet to to run the applications. Here we go to the uh, we go to the project and uh, let's run the demo for young start and it will run in the React applications. And uh, okay, it, it will open the web page. You can see this is a very example demo. And uh, what we did in the demo is just uh, like, uh, it, we, I call the get balance DAPI from the uh, DA, uh, wallet DAPI and uh, I provide address and some contract. That means we can call the function to get a balance and uh, check the balance of these two kinds of assets on this address. And I, I just console.log of it. 
instead of updating some UI things, it's too much work for me. Uh, the, I think uh, something wrong, maybe. Okay, just refresh it. And uh, okay, we see here is uh, the demo. And uh, we open the console, clear the unnecessary message. We connect the new line. And you can see the new line extension will just uh, pop up and you connect to it. Now you are connected to new line to this demo applications already. And you can also get the balance of it, which is the function I just displayed. And you can see it is, it is the outcome. And here is the two balance of my address. It's the neo balance and also the guest balance of it. And for the DAPI, there is documentation and you can do a lot of things like invoke the contract, read the contract, these kind of things. That's all for the new line and the front end DAPI demo. And uh, now I think it goes through this examples and the demos. Maybe you have uh, some like brief preview of uh, how to work with smart contract and dApps on Neo and on N3. And uh, that's all for today's my uh, workshop. And uh, welcome to any questions you, you have. And uh, uh, I'm very glad to answer your questions and provide some helps. And thanks. I can awesome. stop my sharing. Yeah. Awesome session. I guess we got some questions um, from uh, Shiva Pandit. I am new to, to Hackathon. Where can I find the problem set? I guess this is more related to our Hackathon. You can definitely check out the different tracks we have um, on our Hackathon website. Check out the Lomos Lab track that is like uh, blockchain for beginners. This is the workshop we are having now. Uh, then another question we have is from Liu. Thank, thank you for sharing this informa information with us. Would you like to give us some suggestions on what kind of smart contract that we can make in daily life scenario? Uh, daily level, uh, daily life scenario. Okay, I think uh, for daily life, uh, well, I think you can create some. Let, let me think about it. Uh, maybe some NFT related things, or, which is very popular now. You can like uh, uh, link the digital asset to some real world assets, like the artist or some very expensive leisure luxuries, and uh, make it digitalized, digitalized as NFT, and uh, to make it online, people can trade it to to store it. These kind of things. That's my idea. There are another question from Ashwini Kumar. Uh, can you suggest some of the examples of smart contract? How can we use that? Can you suggest some of the examples of smart contract? Uh, well, I think, uh, so the, the, the question is like give some examples, right? Yeah, she's asking some examples like how we can use um, it. I guess that's what she's asking. Uh, okay, I think I can. I can. I think according to the, I think we already pr provide some links here in the box, or in some tutorials here. We we already include some examples. Maybe you guys can check. Yeah, we have put it in the comment section. You can definitely check them out. Mm, then there were a lot of questions in Discord. I guess your teammate has answered them all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, we are also available on the Discord, and you guys can also ask us. We, me and my colleagues, will both online. Sure. So I guess um, that's it. Um, thank you, Stephen, for taking your time you. off your busy schedule for being with us here. It was amazing to hear out all the information you had for us. I'm sure our audience also loved listening to the session. Um, 
before we uh, sign off don't forget to check out the blockchain for beginners track and join the lumos lab community you will be able to find all the details uh, regarding the track on our hackathon website if you have any further doubts ask away in discord um, uh, some important announcements are that uh, our hackathon registrations close at 4 pm ist on 27th june that is day after tomorrow so if you haven't registered yet, register soon at our Hack the Mountains uh, website. Um, and if you have registered for the hackathon, don't forget to fill up the check-in form. It is compulsory to fill that up. You'll find the link in the Discord server too. Uh, also to grab your Hack the Mountains participation certificate, fill, fill up the feedback form so that you can get them. So I guess that's it. Thank you, Stephen, for being with us. It was really lovely having you all here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.